today. From Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida. This is Madden NFL 21. We'll see Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins taking on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. The excitement brewing here in South Florida as a moment ago, the Dolphins starters were introduced to this home crowd. They're fired up as well as they get set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jason Sanders now to get this one started and we are underway from Miami that'll be taken about a yard deep and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback Tampa Bay coming out along with a man who needs no introduction the great Tom Brady and what I'm looking for from him today the things every quarterback is looking to do lead his team to a victory doesn't matter whether he's throwing it running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Shotgun now for Brady. Oh, he's gonna air it out right away. And no, incomplete. Boy, they took a shot there on the first play, tried to start it out with a bang, but it's second down. That's at least a couple of times that they've tried to stretch the field here in this first quarter. They haven't been successful yet, but obviously they're going to keep trying, and maybe they'll find some seams underneath as this game progresses. Brady will try again on second down. And this one is incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. That sun's going to be a factor all game long. I'm not sure it made a difference on that one, but it's something to think about on all deep throws during this time of year. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. From the gun, it's Brady. And that will be incomplete as well. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Jakeem Grant back deep for Miami. There's a nice move. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it'll be Dolphin football. Here is Tua Tagovailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top? He's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 24. Now the man from Kentucky, this is Lynn Bowden. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. 
Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they will just roam and hit. Out of the gun on third down, here's Tua. And that is incomplete. Now that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. Back deep, Antonio Brown. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're gonna lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Brady gonna bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. The Fort Lauderdale native back near home, Giovanni Bernard. And he's taken down. It's a gain of three from the 17 to the 20. Menardrick McKinney there to make the stop. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven from the 20. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. He's got it complete to Gronkowski. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So Miami coming out for their second drive. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 22. They'll drop to throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. 
How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll run it here with Bowden. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the gun, it's Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he goes out right around the 39. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it, and his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. So after the INT, it's Brady. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Pick it up. Watch out for score. Brady gives this one off to Jones. Tackle made there by Eric Rowe. On second and seven, Brady. Looking sideline, incomplete. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, Brady. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No. They'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. Excellent placement, and off that bounce, Charles, I didn't know where it was going to go. It can be an inexact science as to where they place it, but they say the two-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how they really determined that. And let's face it, at the end of that play, one side's going to be happy, the other team's going to be unhappy. So, what do they do, shorten the hypotenuse? I mean, how do they figure that out? You know that stuff. You're the smart guy. Oh, no, that's you, partner. Here's Bowden. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Levante David in on the tackle. 
Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They run with Bowden. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. He finds his target, Fuller. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. His first catch, good for nine in the first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Fuller. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Three yards the gain there, second down. Tugabai Loa working out of the gun. Got a man complete. It's Fuller again. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45 yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Two and a throw again, and incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Again, they will throw it with Tonga Bailoa. And that's incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. And again, it's Tonga Bailoa. And it's caught by Parker. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 27-yard line. That gain on third down, good for 28. It's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 27. On the ground, it's Bowden. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Two yards the loss, second and 12. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half. But I don't think it's all been this far. The line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. On play action, 
Here's Tua. Looking for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. So much about defending the pass is being able to be right there at the moment the ball gets to the receiver. And he was right in his hip pocket, helping force that incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Tua sets up to pass it. Going for it all. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So on fourth down, Dolphin kicker Jason Sanders comes on. This one from 46 yards out. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And the Dolphins will jump out to a 3-0 lead. Well, the drive started the shadow of their own goalpost all the way back at the 2. Pretty nice job of getting downfield and at least getting 3. Agreed on that one. A real nice job because really their goal was to get out of the shadows of those goalposts and give themselves a little bit of room to help out their defense. Instead, they got 3 points out of it. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Back now comes Tampa Bay. So far they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Brady and the Buccaneers here, first and 10 at their own 24. He'll set up to throw from the gun. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And he'll be out right at the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Now a first down carry by Jones. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Brady's throw there complete, and he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Seven yards there and a first down. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. Well, I would have figured after the nine-yard run on the previous play, getting one more yard wouldn't have been much of a problem. But apparently it was, and now it's third down. They'll try and run for it with Jones. 
And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Give him a yard on the play, and he's definitely short. It'll be fourth down and a few inches. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Here's Tua, and his throw here's incomplete. Well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Off of play action, tongue of Iloa. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it, and they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Second interception for him now here in this first half, and you got to think he's a rookie, Charles. How much does confidence start to become a factor? I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines. The coach is going to check on it. His teammates are going to check on it because when you haven't done it before, it's not something that's part of you. You got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how he bounces back. Yeah, because two interceptions for him in college and a half, I mean, that just didn't happen. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Brady. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. That's good for a Buccaneer first, a pickup of 12 yards. Brady going to fake the give to Jones and set up the throw. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? Here's Bernard. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind a line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. You got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sets his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Operating from the gun, Brady. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. Now they couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will tie us at 3-3.
These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right. right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 three, three now as the kick is away. Jakeem Grant now to return. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Whoa, I can't stand myself! Miami set to take over. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Now a handoff here to his running back. These two teams all tied after one. looking right and just no chance of turning the corner he can only get back to the line of scrimmage second and ten coming up defensively though they had a chance there to hit him for a loss couldn't get it done looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield but he wasn't able to get him down but his compatriots they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield now they'll throw with tug of Iloa. And over the middle, this is Parker. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 36. Two at a Parker there for the Miami first. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Looking to pass to him. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Throwing now is Chungabailoa. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Fuller. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Trying to 
keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Tongue of Iloa on first and ten. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. The kick by Sanders is good. And the Dolphins will jump out to a 3-0 lead. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Here's the Tampa Bay offense and Ronald Jones leading him out. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try and loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at the 20. Out of the gun, he'll throw. He's going to drop this one down to Bernard. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. They'll run it with Jones, and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Two yards, good enough for a first. 
It's been tough sledding on the ground, but after that first down pickup, they've got to gain a little bit more confidence and feel good about starting a new set of downs trying to move the ball. So first and 10 now from the 30. And they'll keep on the ground with Jones. He'll take this up just shy of the 40. Excellent display of footwork on that run. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? From the 38, Brady looking sideline incomplete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Jones. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. There's a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. Two first downs have him up to the 41 now for first and 10. Throwing now is Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Three yards the gain there, second down. from the gun it's Brady that's complete to his running back Evans and he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 28 a really good pickup of 28 yards that was a nicely run slant route and what the receivers trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target so now first and ten as they've crossed into miami territory as they've got it to the 28 yard line that throw by brady incomplete Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. A draw play. Bernard. Eventually wrangled down before reaching the 20, but a strong run. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. From the gun on third down, Brady. Open man is Godwin, it's complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 13 yard line. Brady finding Godwin there for a bucket air first. And there's actually zero pressure on the quarterback on that play. Third down, he has all the time in the world to eventually find an open receiver for a first down pickup. First time into the red zone for the Buccaneers. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. 
Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. A completion, yes, but certainly not what they wanted. A loss of a full six yards. You know the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? But you're going to tell me, good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first is good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you, leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen, and then you do your blocking. How about the read, though, by the defensive guys? They weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the lineman to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage. And that's going to be knocked away in the end zone. It's incomplete. Eric Rowe that time able to knock that pass away. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. The Bucks on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and 16. Now Brady again. And that will be caught, but out of bounds. Out of bounds, ruled incomplete here. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and that will tie things up at 6-6. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It sounds like you're going negative on me I there, was, partner. I was. Sounds like sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. So back even at six apiece as the kick's away. This is Jakeem Grant. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. I can hear you. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> fan, weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Gonna give this time to the tailback. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he stopped immediately there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. The Dolphins on third down, three for seven so far in this game. Here it's third and two. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion.
Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. A gain of 13, it's a first down. There was a little space there, yes, but that was a well-executed run by the rookie. It was, and he wasn't one of the higher-rated rookie running backs coming out. He's probably on the next tier. But let me tell you something. If he becomes more consistent and continues to have that drive to be one of the best, we'll see more of that in the future. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Tua going to throw. He's letting this one go for Fuller. Oh, and Tua going to be intercepted for the third time. Mike Edwards picks it off. So his struggles just continuing here in the first half, throwing the football. Charles now three interceptions. And they don't feel like they're just great plays by the defense. There's a sense that maybe he's a little careless with the football now. So some of the great coaches in the past, you know what they've always said? I can't teach you, obviously, because you're not listening. So maybe the bench can teach you. He's got to be careful now. He might get pulled. It's Brady. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete the completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Well, that's not exactly how they drew that one up, nor practiced it, because on first down, you're trying to get some yardage to set up second and third down calls. In this case, had to drop it off to his running back. But boy, they closed quickly on that one and stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. I think it might be time to move to a different section of the playbook there because back-to-back -back runs, both for loss. Now they have third and long coming up. on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and 14. Here's Jones. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No game on the play. And that's going to leave him with a fourth down. The run on third and long, so I guess waving the white flag a little bit. Yeah, and I think sometimes teams are so committed to running the football that they'll take a chance, even in a long yardage situation, to let them know on the other side, this is what we're going to be about today. In this case, they didn't get a first down, but if you're thinking along with them, hey, they might be committed to running it all game long. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Here comes Grant on the return. A big boot that time, 57 yards, the official distance. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Miami set to take over. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they wanted. Put it mildly, that is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in good spot, great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turn the ball over. Yeah, turn the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Off play action, he'll throw to start the drive. And throw right side complete to Parker. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. 16 yards right off the bat in the first down. Palmer, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. You have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Two. 
Two and now on first down. This is caught inside the 15. And they move this all the way down to the nine. 36 yards on the play. I'm pretty sure any quarterback will tell you it's nice to have a tight end that can stretch the field. And how about him right there, working in the heart of the defense, and they connect on a very nice play downfield. A combination of talent and toughness to go into the Briar Patch. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And the Dolphins are going to be set up with a first and goal as a nice run there gets them down to the six-yard line. So that run gets them about halfway home. Yes, yeah, now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try and put it in that way. On second and goal, they'll give it to him again. And he'll take this into the end zone for the Dolphins touchdown. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have broken our tie as they take the lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it works very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. And it's up and good to extend the lead to 13-6. So that drive, four plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. to the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. A touchdown would tie it. They trail 13-6 as they come up with a first and 10. Start out on the ground with Jones. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise. And now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. From the 25 on second down, Brady. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. That's to his running back, complete. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. Returnable for Grant. A solid 12-yard return after the 55-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. On one hand, as we look at some of his struggles with the three interceptions, he's got to be upset. On the other hand, they're still winning this game. So how does he take care of the ball the rest of the game? That's what his teammates are interested in because they've picked things up for him throughout. you got to look over the defensive side, the kicking game. Those guys have made it work for him. Now his goal, not mess up anything else down the stretch. Yeah, forget about those three picks, move on. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. From the gun, it's Tua. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off at the 39. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Well, you just kind of feel for him right now. Four interceptions, and you can almost see through his face mask. There's a lot going on in between the years. There certainly is, and probably way too much, because now he's probably doubting himself a little bit, wondering what adjustments he has to make. But here's what he needs to do. Get through this game, go to the press conference, meet it head on, and show your teammates you're ready to shoulder what happened today and you'll be ready for the next game. And if he can do that as a rookie, that's a great sign of maturity. <laughs> On first and 10, here's Brady. Over the middle to Evans. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Shotgun now for Brady. That's out to his running back, Fournette. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Three yards the gain there, second down. From the gun, it's Brady. Evans has it left side. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the gun, Brady. He's got it complete to Gronkowski. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Again, they'll throw with Brady. This is caught. Gronkowski. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Tom Brady to his old Patriot power line, Gronkowski. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. This is I don't think it's any state secret to know what they were saying before the start of this drive. Let's go and punch one in the end zone and go into the halftime feeling a heck of a lot better about ourselves. Let's go get this done. Yeah, tie things up, and then you got a brand new ball game. Ryan Suckup on for the point after. <laughs> it's
gets right through, and we are now tied at 13. Just a four-play drive that time, and it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. all as he sends this one away. Grant sets to return it. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. To a tongue of Iloa and the offense heading back out. And it was his interception on the last drive that wound up leading to a game-tying touchdown. And somehow... You can make this a positive, though. You know why? Game tied now. So you're not protecting a lead. So you're not playing that way. You've got to go get the lead again. So maybe it loosens him up a little bit and allows him to go ahead and be a little more free in his play. Final 17 seconds of the half here as they come up to the line first and 10. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. You want no problem. You want no problem me. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. Here comes Grant on the return. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. Any surprise in your mind he's out there to start the second half after four first-half interceptions? He's to be surprised by a lot of things, partner, but in this case I'm not because you know they want him to be their guy. And the only way to truly establish that is to give him a chance to work through some of the issues he had in the first half. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that will give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. But there was pressure all around him, so the only play was to try and get out of there. I think it was an excellent effort by him just to get back to the line of scrimmage. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Here's Michael Pilardi now. 
as he'll kick it away for the second time. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this time. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. A very tough run, but for a short gain out near the 32. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. To throw is Brady. And yeah, he finds Gronk. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Operating from the gun, Brady. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Brady to throw again. And he's got a man. It's the tight end, Howard, complete. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A little surprise pays off on third and one. Pass instead of run. Gets him 15 yards. First down is Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Again, it's Brady. On the screen, Bernard. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. 
They'll wind up losing three yards here, and they're going to have a third down. Brandon, how about that reaction there from a defensive end? Able to recognize the screen pass trying to happen, broke off his pass rush, and then get back to tackle the running back. That's a very athletic and intelligent play. Reminds me of you working out and seeing that the treadmill's open and getting there before anyone else. See, I know you're just patronizing me right now. Everybody knows at home that that is nothing but a shot at me, and I'll take it, absorb it, and we'll move on. Brady's throw on third down there is incomplete. The one with the dive look that time on defense just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. Suckup's kick is good. And the Bucks take a 3-0 lead. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Oh, Brandon, but, but six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And this carries into the end zone. And yeah, this will be a touchback as Grant opts not to return it. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. And unfortunately for him, this montage, not highlights, low lights in this one, partner. Way too many mistakes, too many errors. Sometimes it's on the guy throwing the ball, sometimes it's on the teammates, but it all comes back to him. It goes on his ledger. So when you're playing this type of a game, you start to look for other ways to get out of it. Do you throw it to shorter passes, some check downs, maybe use your legs a little bit more, don't throw the ball downfield. All those things you're looking for, and then you got to watch the tape and figure it all out so the next time it doesn't happen again. So far the tape, four interceptions. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run. So now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Second and six, just inside the 30. They faked the handoff, now Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Kosicki. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. They'll run on third down with Brown. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Looking to pass. Tua. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. 
And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Seven yards there and a first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll try it again with Bowden. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 63 yards receiving for him now, and that last catch good enough for a first down. Walking well, here to face shorthanded tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 34. Throwing now is Chungavailoa. And a quick shuffle pass here is complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now a handoff here to his running back. And a nice run. They're going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks 21. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Well, they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Mike Gesicki on the pass from Tua Tonga of Iloa. And the Dolphins are going to jump back in front. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Sanders on for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins.
for the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. This is Jones, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. When you're lateral to the line of scrimmage, linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. Second and 11 now, Brady. And he's gonna find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there and it also brings up third down. Well, sometimes despite the best planning, the defense actually has a plan as well and they blanketed everyone on that play. They were able to close it down and spill him for a loss. On third and long, it's Brady. Airing this one out for Evans. And that's caught inside the 30. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. Hey, you need a big play? Go to your big play guy. Listen, that's football 101. When you have to have it, you expect that guy to step up. A lot of people call these receivers divas. Sometimes just leadership when they get in the huddle and say, get me the ball, I'm about to make a big play. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Here's Bernard. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The last run got a couple, here's second and eight. Back to the ground, this time with Jones. And he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, Brady. Open man is Godwin, it's complete. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Eighth catch for him now, he's been a big factor. And it's a first down. And they've had a great impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Here's Brady to throw. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. 
10 yards on the touchdown pass. And the Buccaneers have once again taken the lead. That's why you've got your star out there. Throw the ball to him. They did. That's simply saying we don't care what coverage you put out there. He's so good. We're going there with the football anyway, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Inside the red zone, they go to him. He gets it done. Extra point try now for Suckup. And that one gives them a three-point lead. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. the touchdown now it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away the return man is Grant and he'll be tackled just shy of the 25 the Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field and they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time a drive that really relied on the quarterback Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keep, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. They'll run it here with Bowden. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. Here's Bowden. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. They run with Bowden. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. On the ground, it's Bowden. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. throw with Tagovailoa and over the middle this is Parker only three yards on the catch 
It's third down. Now Tua. And that's complete to Lynn Bowden. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. He dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on to punt for Miami. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. Mike Evans and the rest of the offensive unit heading back out there now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. Raquan Davis breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play-action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Another try after the first down sack. Brady, and this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking downfield for Godwin. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Chris Godwin, 76 yards. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. We keep waiting year after year to see signs of Tom Brady's arm strength deteriorating, but his message there, keep waiting. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. You're trying to get off the field, and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary, and you give up a big one. Yeah, that throw traveling and even 64 yards in the air. Suck up for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit.
Tua and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 18. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. There on the coverage, knocking that one away was Mike Edwards. They're down two scores, and they need a quick one to try and get back into this one. That was one way to try and get it done. Unsuccessful in the attempt, but they have no choice but to keep trying. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. From the gun, it's Tua. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Third and inches, and they've got some extra beef up front. Three tight ends. And to give this time to the tailback. Nice play, man. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. first down going deep here for Parker and that will be incomplete would have been a big hitter if they had connected instead it's second down this defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball and they were more than ready for it they've got the lead fourth quarter maybe can expect more passes like that downfield so now they'll come up on second and ten once again from the 28 Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Now a short one to Gesicki. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 11 yards there, first down. The coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Tua going to throw. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. They really got to get some yards and chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. Again, they will throw it with Tonga Bailoa. Forced out to his left. 20! Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield. Those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. So after the big play, look at this. All the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And they're not able to hook up there, incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down, that leads to a second and 10. 
to a fast pass outside complete. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins have got it back to a one-score game. Had the option to hand that one off or run it himself, but instead, a really easy quick pass. I like the way they made a decisive decision and got it right to the receiver. One move later, he's in the end zone. Sanders now to add the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. That time, a nine-play drive. And it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. The attention shifting back to Chris Godwin and the rest of the Tampa offense. He's north of 150 yards in this game. He's been doing his thing, hasn't he? That he has, and he's been enjoying himself. And it's the type of game that you get locked into a pretty good groove. May not be record-shattering, but it's the type of game that if you accumulate that throughout a season, you're going to be one of the top receivers in the game. See how much they incorporate him here on this drive. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll set up to throw from the gun. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. But it goes a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here? And what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. <laughs> throwing is Brady on third down. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. They got the completion, but they didn't get the first down. So you've got to think, if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're pretty happy with what you just accomplished there. Yeah, a guy, like you said, got him out of bounds, stopped the clock, kept him short of the marker. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. You need to get the ball away here in the fourth quarter while you just hold a slim lead. But that punt, absolutely ideal. They pin them inside the five-yard line. They give their defense a really nice opportunity.
And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's upended at the six as they double their room to maneuver on a pickup of three. And while they hope to continue this drive, it's really already mission accomplished. They've given enough space now that they have to pump the ball. They've done so with that first run. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Tua. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. He finds his target, Fuller. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. They were backed up to start the drive. But how about that aggressiveness? Firing it downfield right away. Nice job there getting out towards what would have been their normal starting position. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and ten. He's going to let one go deep for Parker. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Tua setting up shop to throw again. Fuller brings it in over the middle. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Very unfortunate. I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them. So this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. He's going to wind up and air it out. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. After what they faced during this game where they've given up a ton of yards downfield, there has to be a measure of revenge right there for the secondary. They've been shredded throughout the game and finally forced an incompletion. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Looking to pass to him. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the box 40. 23 yards to pick up there. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. And that little extra pace that he had in the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10, right at the 40. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. It's complete to Parker, left side. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. Go, 
on first down, Tonga Bailoa. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And that is out of the back of the end zone incomplete. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Two and a throw again. He gets this one complete to Bowden. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. And again, it's Tug of Iloa. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third. And now they deal with fourth down. That has to feel like a very unsatisfying drive, right? You move the ball all that way, and then you can't convert on third down. But it was satisfying up until that point. Almost like a great movie. And then the film cuts out before the big ending. Sanders' kick is good. And the Dolphins have tied things up here in the fourth. So he remains perfect. Three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now... You know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. They'll come out with a three tight end look on the first play of the drive. Jones. And he's got some space here. He'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Well, I tell you what, when you get a running back who can move like that in the open field, that's something to take advantage of, and they certainly did there. And first and foremost, this is all about vision. He can see the play developing right in front of him, and once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him, he's just going to keep right on going. He's going deep for Brown. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Good shot, good shot. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. To throw again, Brady. That's complete to his running back, Evans. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. But sometimes, Brandon, there's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there a big third down conversion.
After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. And to give this time to the tailback. And down inside the 15 he goes. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now a carry for Bernard. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. That's a really nice play, to be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free, and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They'll run it with Jones. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Now what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead, so how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about if you're confident in your kicker. And if you got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down. And then I did. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Tom Brady to his old Patriot pal, Rob Gronkowski. And the Bucs are going to take the lead. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So that drive takes them down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucs. the touchdown now it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away that'll be taken about a yard deep and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback so Tua and the Dolphins down by seven just under two minutes to go needing to go pretty much the length of the football field as they have it first and ten Side complete to Parker. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. A gain of six there on first. This is where you learn a lot about rookie quarterbacks. How can they run that two-minute drill? We're about to find out. Yeah, and for them, it's not just proving it to guys like you and me watching the game and trying to beat a defense. It's proving it to their teammates that they can have the confidence in them when they line up in these situations. Now an open man, that's the tight end Gesicki, it's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. A 
The Dolphins moving with a sense of urgency here. He'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. Now how about that? Rattled by a big play on the previous snap, they bounce back, and that's exactly what they needed defensively, getting a big play of their own. Two are going to try and go quickly here. Now Tug of Iloa. They'll check this one down to Bowden complete. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. The Bucks with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Back to throw is Tua. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. And he's across for the touchdown. It's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Sanders on for the extra point. And we may very well be headed to overtime. So this drive spans seven plays. And the touchdown and PAT mean we are tied here in the final minute of play. to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. They'd like to avoid overtime here, so maybe they can work the sidelines, but then defensively, how do they adjust to that if they do work the sideline? It's the old leverage game, and we usually talk about leverage at the line of scrimmage, right? Who's going to win with the low blocking and everything that goes along with that? But in this case, you're trying as a defender to leverage them towards the middle of the field, not let them get to the sidelines and try and tackle them in bounds in order to run the clock out chess match here late and we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play we're all even the extra session in a moment this is the nfl on ea sports it's a little teaching moment here overtime rules remind us how this goes partner okay so in the past we had sudden death first team to score wins but no longer now if the team receives the ball scores a touchdown they win the game if they kick a field goal though or don't score the other team gets a possession 
and after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Dolphins about set to go to work on offense. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. He's had some big runs in this game. Not there, though. But I don't think they're going to be deterred by that play right there. He's had some nice runs in the game. And how many times have we seen a good running back get stopped, yet turn it into something big on a later carry? I'd stay with him. Coming up on a third and nine. Opening drive of overtime as they look to convert. First throw of the OT session for Tua. And that will be incomplete. The temptation to go for it, probably there. Always is, especially in overtime. Got to punt it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially play a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. Here's Michael Pilardi now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. With it is Brown. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And this offense trotting back onto the field. Let's turn our attention here to Ronald Jones. And as we peer at the numbers, he got off to a struggling start, but since then really found his rhythm. And I think that comes together with not just the halftime adjustments, but just that quiet confidence. If you just keep doing the things you've been working on, eventually there will be creases. You know, find those gaps in the defense, keep working on them, and maybe what didn't happen very well for you in the beginning of the game, it starts to open up as the game moves on. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. The CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but man, his first step is so quick too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll run it here with Bernard. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. What can Brady do now with his drive? 
Evans has it left side. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Seven yards there and a first down. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Brady's throw there complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 29-yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory as they're down to the 29-yard line. From the gun, it's Brady. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And this will be caught. Touchdown. They needed overtime to get it done, but put this one in the win column. All right, all right, all right. A partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just huh? want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. And with that, we sign off from Miami.